Good afternoon, welcome back to the 120th. Today we are printing. We're currently out in my darkroom slash garage slash studio, uh, which I've spent the last few months turning into a darkroom of some sort or, or, or allowing me to use as a darkroom. Um, I have been light proofing, so let me just show you. So on here we've got the, uh, the garage door obviously, uh, and a lot of light was coming in through this garage door. So here's what I've done. So I put this kind of flashing along the bottom and along the top. So you can see it here, all the way across here, all the way down here. It's not anything special, it's just basically a damp proof coursing. And you'll see this one is sort of overhangs a little bit so that when I open the garage and close, it forms a little curtain to keep the light out. This one is attached to the, the frame here, not to the door. So I'll show you what happens when I open the door there. So that stays put. And then I'll show you the other side. So here we go. So when we close, there's actually another layer of that flashing on the back, which then closes on. I'll show you there. Closes to seal off. So we've got a double seal on the top. Uh, and that single seal on the bottom. And it turned out that the sides were actually pretty well sealed already. Uh, so I didn't need to do much there. You'll see I've put a couple of bits of duct tape here and there just to cover some holes where there was light coming in. The other thing I did was filled in all the gaps and the little ridges of the garage door just with uh, spray foam. It's, that is horrible stuff. So I've got all my equipment here ready. I've got my trays. So this is obviously my Intrepid with uh, Rodenstock Omega enlarging lens on it. The reason I've got that out is that I'm going to be using this, which is the Intrepid 4x5 enlarger. So you put your 4x5 negative in there. Um, the, the camera, you mount the camera that way around, take the back off. And then this sits on the top like that. Uh, I'll show you that again once it's all set up. It will make sense. I've got an easel from Secondhand Darkroom. Uh, that set me back only about 25, 30 quid actually. Um, but you can spend crazy money. I saw like Kaiser easels, like new Kaiser easels, which are like eight, nine hundred pounds. Bonkers. I haven't got that sort of cash. Right, but this is actually what I'm most proud of. This here is my print washer. It is obviously a washing up bowl. I've drilled a hole in the washing up bowl and put in, you see there? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run just the standard garden hose pipe uh, in from outside so I can fill this up and then I'll run this pipe out underneath the garage door to the drain outside. And the most ingenious part is this. This is my plug. So the way this works is once there's water in here, and, the, uh, and, and therefore there is water pressure trying to get out of this hole, and just rest it over the hole, and the water pressure will hold it in place. Which means I can control the flow of water out of the print washer. So there we go, that's the setup. Uh, let's see if it works. Right, I've got everything set up now. Time to give it a go. I've got in there a picture of me to, to start with, to do my testing with. Uh, I'm going to start off printing with Ilford Multigrade RC. I haven't done any printing since I was in school, so this might not go right straight away. We'll see. Uh, so let's turn all the lights off and see if you can see this. There we go. You seeing that? Yeah, you can see that. It's just here. I, I don't, I've got to confess, I don't know if these all these safe lights are in fact safe. Whatever, I'll try and be quick about all this. First thing is to do a test strip to get the right exposure times. Uh, initially I'll be doing five second intervals, I've heard that that is a good starting point. Oh, I feel like a long time, eh? Right, and it goes into the developer. Ooh. Well that is what test strips are for. That whole thing is completely black. Get another test strip, and let's change that first of all to one second. 
Off we go into the developer again. And this test strip's completely black again. So these first uh, tests have not gone very well, but that's okay. That's what we're here for, isn't it? That's why we're testing. Oh, I'll tell you what it is. It's probably because I've got the bloody um, the aperture wide open. Set up again, planning to close the iris and completely forgot. All right, just messed up again. I'm messing up a lot here, but that's okay. These, oh, you're kidding me. It's wide open again. Another one wasted. This is painful to watch, huh? Let's try again. Give that a quick rinse. And it's definitely uh, looking a little better. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. I think we're going to go with four. So four seconds is what we're going to go with. Here we go into the developer. Well, it looks like it's worked, which is, you know, a big step. Here we go. Oh, do you know what? Really not too bad. Oh yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with that. So what I'm actually gonna do now is uh, use a different negative, uh, and I've got one ready. And it is one of my girls. That one, I think. It's a lovely one of them holding hands. Isn't it nice? And then I can give that to them. Uh, three, two, one. Oh no, wasn't straight in the um, easel. Let me show you this one. Oh, I'll put it back in to wash a bit more afterwards, but. Yeah, pretty chuffed with that. Very happy. Right then, let's go again. Uh, I want to check the focus, because uh, I think that could be better. Uh, I also want to get the framing right, of course, so let's, uh, let's go for it. And here we go. Taking it out, get it in the developer. Let's uh, get some water running on this. This looks pretty good. What do you think? A bit more contrast needed? Framing is good. Let's turn the lights back on and see what we got. Not too much contrast now. What do you think? Does that look about right? Maybe it looks about right. Right then, that one is sufficiently washed. We'll give that a go hang that up. What do you reckon? I think it looks pretty good. There is no doubt that that is a different experience, eh? Right then, that's it for this evening. I'm going to leave these prints to dry. I'm going to head back inside and uh, let's take a look at them when they've dried. Okay, so that went well. I'm very happy with the results of that. This one was kind of where I ended up and it really is quite beautiful to look at. I was never a big, uh, I was never drawn to printing. I was never kind of desperate to do it. It was always on the list. It was there, you know, something that I, I you know, probably should get around to at some point. Um, but now that I've done it, I mean, that, is, that really is, it's, it's just such a different experience to, uh, to scanning uh, images and looking at them on the computer screen. So there we go, that was my uh, garage darkroom uh, and my first foray into printing for a long time. Next up on the channel is an interesting one uh, because, I don't know if you've noticed, if, you, if you're a, an avid watcher of my channel, then thank you very much, obviously. Uh, but you may have noticed I haven't posted very much recently. So it's been like a month, I think, since the last uh, video that I put up until this one. And the reason for that is I've been suffering the kind of photographer's version of, of writer's block. Um, I've been out two or three times with various cameras, uh, come up with a plan, headed out, uh, and then got there and just had no inspiration. Um, and been wandering around with my camera and just seeing nothing that, that sparked my interest. Um, and it's a problem. It's, it's something that I've, I've had to sit down and think pretty hard about. Uh, the next video that comes out on the channel, I will be putting up in the next few days and it will be all to do with that inspiration. Uh, I'm gonna be quite honest with you and I'll open up about my photographer's block and um, what I'm doing to try and get around it. So look forward to that one. It's gonna be deep. Come along with me, join me on my journey. And the, I would also obviously uh, welcome any comments that you guys have about how you have overcome 
uh, any kind of uh, inspiration clogs uh, like mine. That's the next video coming out. And then once that clog has been freed, I'm essentially taking a plunger to myself. Um, once that clog has been freed, there is masses in the pipeline. I've actually got boxes full of cameras that are ready to be tested, reviewed, put through their paces and um, take some, some great images with. Uh, thanks for joining me on this one. Uh, if you yearn for a dark room, the message is you can do it. Just go and light proof whatever space you've got, figure out how you're gonna get some water in there and get on with it. Uh, and I would highly recommend it because the results of having that, that genuine analog photograph in your hand that you've created from scratch is really quite rewarding. Uh, so if you fancy it, give it a go. Uh, if you're not currently subscribed to my channel, then please like and subscribe. And that's it. I will see you for the next one while I try to unclog myself. See you then.